Okay, well, welcome back, everybody. Good to see you again. Um, all right, intro stuff. Uh, welcome to Rescued by Dragons, the Dark Brew Monster Vanguard campaign. The campaign we started online uh, while we couldn't play our uh, Tales of the Brunch Club campaign because of things. Um, if you want to listen to our Tales of the Brunch Club fantasy fiction podcast uh, based on the D&D game we play. You can find that at our Rescued by Dragon podcast channel or at rescuedbydragons.com. And uh, for last week, actually, before we get into last week, a little bit of late house cleaning. Uh, Nikoya, do you have a inspiration die? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, there was something that occurred to me two sessions ago uh, when you all were in the grotto doing mushrooms and Nikoya did not do one and then got really sad because she felt she was missing out on something, but, <laughs> but decided not to take it and that stayed in character. Um, so that, that, I, that really struck with me. So give yourself a, a belated inspiration die for that. I will because do that. Sticking with your character instead of like, oh, what am I missing? <laughs> is is good good role playing. I, I appreciate it. Um, okay, so uh, last week, uh, oh yeah, you guys left Kurtle Muck, uh and uh, with the blessings of their leader, Cobalt leader Kim, uh, you got to the end of the cavern where you found a wall it just ended in a wall and you were attacked by a giant black pudding <laughs> uh, <laughs> which you guys were successful in defeating and you were also successful in defeating its uh owner master trainer i'm not really sure what he was uh the crazy Lover. the crazy dwarf uh wizard uh and when you killed him you the illusion of the end of the uh mines dropped. Uh, you saw before you a fast-moving river coming out of the ground and going down towards a very, very distant city. And you also discovered a room off to the side, which was basically this guy's treasure hoard and junk hoard. He was basically a hoarder, and you guys were able to find uh, a lot of potentially nice stuff that you stuck in a bag of holding uh, that you also found. Um, when you got to the end of the caves, you saw some old chiseled stone docks and on it you found a folding boat called skiffy mix skiff face uh which you said the words skiffy mix skiff face it unfurled you piled into it and shot down the river at incredible speeds well much faster than you were used to walking um and uh as night fell you pulled up to a clearing uh expertly done by kelwin uh <laughs> I uh, managed to beach the boat right next to your campsite uh, where you and I'm just going to say you guys spent the night there, uh, woke up, and, you know, unless you wanted to venture completely perpendicular into an unknown forest, you get back into the boat and careen down the river. Sail so away, can we... sail away, sail away. <laughs> All right, so that's where we open up. You guys are careening down a river very, very fast. You've already gone about, you know, three or four hours the previous day down this river, and it's going fast, and you are discovering what would have taken you four days walking is going to take you a day on this fast-moving river that's basically going downhill. Uh, the... Ba river bank is speeding by you on one side of the river bank it is the forest really comes right up to the river on the other side which is the side you guys camped on um there was like a little bit about 15 20 feet before the trees started to like get uh you know more thick and turn into to forest and there was kind of a well-worn path and you guys get the feeling that whenever a uh, crazy dwarf wizard guy had to go into town to sell something or buy something uh, he took his boat in and walked back, and you get the feeling that that was his path walking back. Um, so not too late in the afternoon, you start to see the city getting larger and larger and larger, and you see these big city walls uh, coming up on you. And right in the middle of the city walls is an opening with a big gate 
iron gate that allows when it's closed, the water is allowed to rush through it. Um, fortunately, the gate is open. <laughs> and as you get closer, your the hills start to flatten out. So you're flattening out, and then the river gets a little bit slower as it's flat for a while, still moving very quickly, propelling you uh, across the landscape. Um, you don't feel like you're out of control or anything, and Kelwin is keeping a doing a good job of keeping you guys straight. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure I am. <laughs> With Valmaya giving you instructions on like the occasional rock or driftwood or log sticking up to dodge, and it all goes very smoothly. And you enter through the walls of this city, and this city is pretty big. And there are buildings that come right up to the edge of the river. Like there's a walk, like a brick walkway. This isn't, this isn't, you know, like this is a, a more traditional river that uh, city that you guys are used to. Stones, uh, timber framed houses, um, that that you know, cobblestone streets, that kind of thing. This is kind of more, more like a like a dwarven city or a human city in forested land, something like that. Uh, so you guys go through, and as these buildings pass by, you go under two or three large bridges uh, with a lot of foot traffic and wagon traffic. And then you come to an area where the river opens up into a sort of delta, and there are channels cut in the delta on both sides. And one of them, you know, and these are basically channels for like ships to pull in, and there are docks on either side. And this is a busy busy port. Shaaraka is right on the water. Um, and it's a very busy, wide harbor. Well, not really a harbor, more of a delta, but it just has the same purpose. Uh, you can see swirls in the water where the fresh water uh, from the mountain river hits the salt water. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but it's very cool. Um, so you get that like swirl with the saline and the uh, salt meat and um, non-salt meat. And uh, so, and then you pass by Two, the largest two ships that you can see of all the ships there, um, one of them says uh, the Ula Bovi, and the other one says the Sambora Bovi. And these are very two large... <laughs> Lucky gets it. <laughs> um, and you can see uh, these, obviously, the two largest ships in the harbor. And there is a space in the dock right next to them. Um, so this is like, hey, possibly a clue to where you guys are supposed to find John Bovey. So do you um, pull into the dock? If you pull up there, what do you guys want to do? Sure, we can try. Okay. So you are now, it's kind of like the, the tidal waters coming in and the river coming out. Um, the water's choppy, but you're not being affected by a current. It's uh, it's basically a choppy, a, a perennially choppy harbor. Um, but you guys are able to pull up to the dock, no problem. Uh, and you find uh, there are a couple of guys who seem to be waiting for you. Uh, hold on. Um, so, uh, one of them leans forward and goes, you know, hey, toss me the line, you know, so huh. whoever can throw up a line, yep. And they pull you in, they tie the boat up, uh, not realizing that you guys can just pick it up out of the water. <laughs> uh, and one of the guys, as he's helping you guys off the boat, because uh, the dock's pretty high, so he puts his hand down and pulls, he helps pull you guys up. and. Um, says, uh, you must be the people from Dark Brew's Rest we've heard about. Could you tell by the tabards we're wearing? Uh, yep. And, uh, nobody really comes down that river very much. <laughs> I was surprised the gate was open, honestly. Oh, we just keep that open. It's almost always open. We close it if there's a, if we know here there's a threat coming or something like that. Um... There's one in the, you know, we, we have a pretty fortified harbor. That's where we would expect the most trouble is from the harbor. Thanks for um, uh, tying us up. Oh, no problem. No problem. Uh, Boxy keep your box face. Uh, all right. You say Boxy <laughs> McBox face. The, uh, it is tied up, but the ropes magically untie and the whole thing goes whoop, 
and just falls into the water, this little floating box, which you can, you know, reach down and grab. Uh, and the guards just kind of like, or the, the not guards, but they're just like merchant seamen or whatever. They just kind of step back and they, go, <laughs> and they start laughing. That's, that's pretty cool. You guys are them, you guys are them magic types, huh? Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, um, uh, Master Bovi, uh, asked us to bring, keep an eye out for you guys and bring you over to his offices as soon as you got here. So. If you don't mind, we'd appreciate it if you followed us, you know, it's so we can say we're doing our job. Lead the way. Has somebody grabbed the box? Uh, I'm assuming one of you did. Okay. All right. Yeah. Who's got the box? I think I was, uh, you can't tell, but I think I was looking at Kelvin when I said, and then you can probably reach down and grab the box. So. I'll just hand it to, to someone. Actually, who's got the bag of holding? Do I? Oh, shoot. We forgot it. <laughs> oh wait, uh, I think I wrote down who I had it at first. I don't know if we gave it to somebody else or not. If I ended up with it, I, I didn't haven't want cleaned it. up my notes. I don't know. I just don't think it was me. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can say Nikoya has it. Sure, I I have the bag. Hey. Okay, Nikoya has the bag. Nikoya has. The oh, bag. I think that okay. was something we said we'd figure okay. out in between sessions, and then just didn't. <laughs> no. Sounds like that. Was it who got what? No, I think you guys pretty much claimed whatever magic items you got. No, it was who was who was carrying the bag. Oh, who was carrying the bag? Okay. Carry the bag. All right, Nikoya's okay. the bag man or the bag woman. Bag lady. Bag lady. Bag lady. <laughs> All right, so you hand Boxy McBoxface to Nikoya, who puts it in the... Now, the bag of holding is pretty much at capacity right now, so um, you guys will have to deal, deal yeah, with that have, at some point. We have junk to sell. Yeah. Um, so uh, he leads you uh, down the docks, uh, and the docks quickly go from wooden to stone, the cobble streets, and it doesn't. it's not long before you uh, walk into a... You know, a, a, it looks like a warehouse, but there's a little side building next to the warehouse, and you go in, and um, you step in, and, and it's a nice, large, ornate fire. This doesn't look like a little side building. This looks like a house. Um, and Like like manor, like mansion, or just like under uh, Not a mansion, but not a shack either. Um, you know, like a, a comfortable size house just attached to a warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, you walk in, and it's a kind of a nice foyer. It does look like business goes on here, but it looks like there could also be some residences upstairs, perhaps. Um, you're not quite sure. But uh, he leads you up one flight of stairs and into another, uh, down another hallway. And he goes, uh, yeah, the uh, master is in his office. I'm not sure what he's doing. He's probably just, you know, idling away his time. He doesn't much have to do much these days since he just sits and manages all his ships and warehouses and things. He nice gives, life if you can get it. He gives merchanting a bad name. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you guys go into a room, the guard lets you in, and there's you see uh, he opens the door, you guys shuffle in, uh, he closes the door behind you. It's a pretty large room. But at one end, uh, you see an elf, uh, a sun elf, kind of tan looking. Doesn't look like any merchant you guys have ever seen before. He's like leaning back in his chair. Uh, he's wearing tight leather pants, uh, no shirt, just a leather vest. He's got like super long kind of feathered hair. And he's just kicking back. And, and he's got a lute across his lap and he's just kind of singing to himself a little bit and you can hear him hum you know he goes mm, i'm a paladin <laughs> I hate my all holy teed i ride all the the undead <laughs> will not survive <laughs> oh my god and he looks up and he goes oh oh hey yeah come in i just uh, i was just i was just working on a song what what'd you think it's hot great Great stuff. Good, Are yeah. those pants or chaps? They're pants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, 
He goes, hey, uh, I have oh. a Luda Lele. Maybe later we can jam together. Oh, that would be great. Wait a minute. And then he's like, so things suddenly come into focus. And he's like, oh, I heard you guys were an odd bunch, but you guys are an odd bunch, if you don't mind me saying. Wow. Thanks. Wow. I have been, I have been around the world, and I don't think I have ever seen a group quite like this. You guys are chieflings. Pointing mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. my. Are you a tabaxi? I am. I didn't think they were real. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, and you're a bard? I, I am amazing. And I am a bard. Uh, I always wanted to be a bard, but my parents, you know, made me go into the family business and can't say I'm upset about it. You know, it gives me a comfortable lifestyle. Uh, but anyway, you guys must have been on the road for a long, long time. It's about a... I mean, I expected you to come, but I didn't expect you to get here this quickly. It's like a... It's a tough route across the mountains. It should take about 15, 20 days. So how was, how was the trek? We... It was a little touch and go at some points. We were honestly uh, just living on a prayer for a while, but we made it <laughs> oh through. <my> <laughs> <laughs> Well, what can I do for you? Um, I assumed Olven actually, was going to send you to me. Uh, what news from Oven? I've got those notes here. Message. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, he takes the envelope for you. He uh, points to some chairs. Pull up some chairs. Make yourself comfortable. Oh. And he starts, opens it, and he starts reading it. And then his face just kind of changes expression and becomes very, very serious. Um, and says, uh, you guys left eight days ago? Uh, sounds about right. I think so. How did you get here so fast? We found a, a boat. Boat? Oh. We found a, oh, we found a way through the, through the mountains. In the tunnel. Yeah. You oh, right found now. your way through the dark brew mines. Sure did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, this changes everything. How so? Well, I knew what dark brew had planned. Uh, a little trading post between the three cities. But there was no way I was going to be on board with that because the trek, the trek over the mountains is incredibly arduous, incredibly dangerous, and we have a giant port right here. We can ship right now all over the world. Yes, it wouldn't be nice to link up to Inglestone and, and Sandharth, always looking for new customers, but it really wasn't worth the, wasn't worth the problem. Um, now it becomes a much more viable enterprise especially being able to ship to bring goods that we get finding new buyers for the goods we pick up when our ships come back hmm, i'm still going to get a lot of pushback from the tavern owners and the hospitality guild they could make it a little problematic for me why oh just you know they want people coming in they don't want people going out they prefer well, now all the trade. people coming in from another direction, too. Mm, not if they're going to Dark Brews. If they're just going to Dark Brews to do trade, there's no reason to come all the way over here. That's the kind of the whole point. Mm. Um, I assume that the guild, the, the hospitality guild in Sandhurst is, has a similar feeling that I've heard. Um, Inglestone's guild seems to be a bit more forward thinking. Maybe. Is this really that big of a tourist attraction? Tourist hotspot? Well, it's hard to go below zero tourists. Lo logic doesn't always play into these kinds of things. It's a perceived balance of power. Um, however, tell you what. I will agree 
to support Dark Brew's venture in every single way I see possible and make things as easy for him as possible, not only with my contacts here, but with my contacts in Hearthstone, um, on one condition. I have two children. They are, well, one is, is doing just fine. The other, she's a little bit... Is she a little runaway? <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration dice for Kellen. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, she's a little bit... Well, she's got a bit of her mother in her and has these weird tendencies for, oh, what's the word? Charity. And, Disgusting. Yes. And she's very talented, don't get me wrong, but she's not really into monetizing her gifts. Yeah. What are her gifts? And, well... Why don't I let her explain that to you? And he calls out, Oola! Oola! You wait a little bit. And you still wait a little bit, and he kind of sighs and goes, Oola! Oh, God damn it. Where is that girl? So, hold on a second. She here. So. Oh. What? In what? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ah! Oh, yay! <laughs> yay! Uh, Hi, Ula, Ula, will you please describe yourself? Oh, my, God. Oh. Yay! my name is Ula Bovi. I am. <laughs> Fairly tall, about 5'8", uh, dark hair, you know, grave cleric. Yeah. What are you wearing? I am wearing um, some heavy, well, it's not too heavy for me because I'm pretty strong, but, uh, you know, some armor um, and uh, got my shield on me. And, uh, yeah, I think I look pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ula, you enter this room and you see uh, five humanoids <laughs> sitting in front of your dad who's, you know, put his loot down. He's actually doesn't have his feet up on his table like usual. <laughs> and he's actually got a serious look on his face. Um, and uh, before you, uh, you see these five figures. Uh, they're all wearing uh, a tabard. Uh, in black that says that has a big uh, tan scroll like uh, letter D in the middle of it and uh, please describe yourselves to uh, Ula what she sees lucky you go first hi Ula it's so nice to meet you I want to be your friend I am a well, and I'm a bard I play the Luda Lely and I come from far far away my family sucks I don't need to see them anymore. I'm on adventures. I do map. I travel. Hi. Uh, a tabaxi, in case you didn't know, is a cat person, basically. Um, so you're, yeah, yeah, so you're basically <laughs> talking to a six-foot-tall black cat. Um, I think, do like cats. Yeah, think, think, the, think the remake of Cats the Movie, but not creepy. Oh, <laughs> Impossible. Oh, creepy. <laughs> oh, creepy. Valmaya, please describe your tiefling self. Uh, what do I look like? <laughs> Just wait for Billy to describe it. It's true. Valmaya, describe your back. <laughs> uh, well, I'm 5'6". I got wicked pale white skin, pretty much glow in the dark. Uh, really vulnerable to that. Yeah, you know, fantasy. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> very long ruby red hair. Um, solid black eyes. I got these curly ram horns coming out my my head, and I got a tail. I don't think I've ever actually thought about what my tail looks like, but I have a tail. Um, yep, just a lot of black, also fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Nikoya. Uh, I'm also a tiefling. <laughs> Slash Liz and I are the same person in many respects. Mm -hmm. um, Character. Uh, names. <laughs> what? Oh. Character man. names, please. <laughs> um... Uh, I'm burgundy skinned, I think, and I have these long, tall horns that go up, and I have silver eyes and black hair, and I'm a warlock lady. Oh, yeah, I'm a warlock lady, too. <laughs> what? Sexy. I'm a white cat. <laughs> um, winter. All right. Um, I am a half elf. I think I'm like 6'5, or I'm pretty tall. Um, uh, I'm a guy, a dude, um, <laughs> name's Winter, I wear a lot of leathers, I am an ex, like, mercenary soldier, um, came to Dark Brew to try and find some answers, um, my mom died recently, I don't know who my We're dad is. the backstories right now, we can save that for later, just physical you know, know about my life right out of the <laughs> Yes, but in a role playing scenario. No, she <laughs> looks like she came here she for her. Like he, he looks right. like he came looks like she has daddy issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it all right on that. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's an open book. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Anything else, Winter? No. Okay. There's a hottie, though. <laughs> yeah, I think Winter Swole. Yeah. Uh, Kelwin. Uh, I am a very scowly looking red-headed four foot two really ripped dwarf with like a big <laughs> pole axe, a bunch of scars, and I've got a long braided like ginger beard with like this like metal band braided into it, and I'm just glaring at everyone. Point of order, I don't think you have the pole axe anymore. You upgraded to that glaive, did you not? That's also a pole axe, isn't it? Oh, good good point. Yeah. <laughs> now it's fancier. Now it's fancier pole axe. Okay. Yeah. In like okay. heavy Everyone's scale mail. Weird. Yeah. Well, it's great to meet you all. <laughs> so you guys introduce yourselves. I feel like I should give a little bit more detail about myself after hearing all <laughs> your wonderful explanations. Um, like my race, perhaps, would be helpful to know. Um, I am a high elf grave cleric. You clearly are familiar with my father. Him and I do not get along that well, but you I'm know, sitting right here, Ula. <laughs> Do you know how it is? like your mother. You know how it is, Dad. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, damn, what else to say? I, my eyes are golden. I got those from my father. It's the one thing I inherited from him. But I do take mostly after my mother, who is a moon elf. My father, as you may have guessed, is a sun elf. So that's where the, a lot of the arrogance comes from. He thinks he's better than all of you. But I digress. Not better. Richer. Now... Well, Ula, sure. yes, Dad. You will be joining the Dark Brew <laughs> Monster Vanguard if oh, my gosh, here we go. Kelwin decides he wants you in the for the good of of his and his boss's venture. Um, mm -hmm. And it's time you started making some money in the world instead of that thing you've been doing for years now with the, the graveyards and the hospital and the... It pays the bills, okay? I don't it... have a lot, but I like the graveyard. You know that. What do you mean it pays the bills? You do it all for charity, I pay your bills, and it's time for you to start pulling your own weight like your brother. Oh my God, here we go again with him. I will never be a wizard. I am a <laughs> grave cleric. I... Die with the dead into the afterlife. It is a graceful process. Should we, we give you guys it. a moment? Like, we could step out. No, right. I kind of want to watch this, actually. Well, 
you know, if we're going to get to know each other, this is part of who I am. Is this mm. thing with my dad? I just can't assume. All right. Yeah. Well, Miss Bovey, Ula, yeah. Ula. Yeah, that's my name. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to join us? I mean, it sounds like it could be pretty fun. So, there's not, uh, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be any bed of roses or. Um, <laughs> Or <laughs> luxurious. <laughs> because if parents are rich doesn't mean that I live the high life too. But, you know, I would like to see how I fare on the road. I think I'd do pretty good. Well, worst case, you get yourself killed. No, worst case, you get one of us kills. Killed. So. Uh, maybe likely, but we'll see what happens. I'm very good with the dead. so. Hopefully you can be good with it's the living too. And... We'll see how it goes. Fair enough. Happy to take well, you along, at least back to Dark Brew. Well, what can you tell me a little bit more about your adventures thus far, so I know what I'm getting into here? No. no. All right, Mr. Right. Bovey. <laughs> you, you all, you all can get caught up somewhere else. In just a moment. He takes out a piece of paper, scribbles on it, folds it up, puts it in an envelope, hands it to you, Kelwin. And says, uh, if Ula works out, then everything else will work out. And tell Master Dark Brew, I am looking forward to working with him in a fun and profitable venture. Sounds good. Word. Excellent. Ula, why don't you show them a little bit around the town? I'm sure they're eager to get back, I'm sure... Master Dark Brew has them on a short leash, but is, you know. Is there a place we could perhaps restock? We used a few healing potions on the way oh, here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, um, Ula can show you all that. All right. We don't... It's all reputable, right? No, like, shady sources. We don't want any bad medicine. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> The clinic in the town is, there's a lot of good people who work there. I spent a lot of my time there. Most, so. most of the, most of the uh, shops and apothecaries you'll find in, in, uh, in the city are pretty, as long as you're not in any of the seedier parts of town, you should find a, a good deal. It's, it's a merchant town. They know, the, they know the cost of cheating their customers, and they know the, the debilitating effects of a bad reputation. So, all right. All right. Ula, with that, lead the way. We? Uh, Ula. Yes. Sorry. You come home safely. Mm. I'll try. I'll do my best. But this is what you wanted, and there is a degree of risk. So, I'll do my best. That's all I can promise. A degree of risk can be good. Fair I enough. have faith in you. I wouldn't be sending you out like this if I didn't have faith in you. I may not approve. But I do have faith. We really need to get going. Well, yes, yes, yes. Yes. I hear it may it. rain. I, I, my, my, some, some of my uh, uh, weathermen, my druids, say that it might rain tonight, and you'd, you'd want to get out there before it's, is, uh, you know, before the streets get slippery. They are slippery when wet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Ah. Eating a steel horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're not. It's all Valmaya's fault. <laughs> uh. All right. <laughs> you guys are now on the steps outside the warehouse. Uh, what would you like to do? Find a way to work Hi, in. Ula, I'm so glad you're with us. Oh. This is going to be so fun. I'm going to be your friend. Oh, we got a chatty one. All right. Yes, we do. <laughs> I do like a little bit of conversation now and again. So awesome. I also like snuggles. Good to know. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this it's is, okay. Yeah, I make yeah. everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> you get used to it. I grew up with a lot of animals around the house. So, yeah. None of them sang to you with a little Ailey, did they? With a what? A, a lutalele. 
I think oh, she wow. made it. I think he made it up. <laughs> Not a it's a it's a tabaxi. <laughs> I mean, thing. My, my father has a loot. Yeah, it's like that, and the only difference oh. is that she calls it a he calls it a lootalele, as far as I can tell. Oh, oh play us a song, Lucky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Elves do like, you know, the art. I'm intrigued. It's wanted, wanted, <laughs> <get our> alive. <laughs> Not even tuned. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Moving what was swiftly it, on. <laughs> it is in the four o'clock range. So, what would your um, what would you like to do? Drink. <laughs> I mean, we have this bag of shit. To we do sell need to sell. By... Yeah, we do need to oh, sell yeah. that stuff, and then hopefully buy some good medicine. Is there a good store that'll? We have like. All kinds of gear and weapons and things that we need to sell. Do you have an idea of where we could go and get the best price? Um, you do, uh, Ula. You are aware of a reputable uh, magic shop, magic emporium around the corner. Uh, okay. And you are aware of that. This is called uh, your your brother actually intern or apprenticed there for a while. Uh, <clears throat> under uh, Shayla Chrismar, the owner of the shop, and it is called the Shah, Ar the Shah Arcana. All right. So, yes. Um, so, will you lead them there? Yes. Um, All right. Follow me to right. this shop. There's uh, lots of odds and ends. I think you'll enjoy it. You enjoy fine things and not so fine things. <laughs> <laughs> And audio. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Elves don't have that. Um, hmm. Shopkeeper. Okay, so you're into the shop, and you see a older uh, female elf behind the counter. Look up, and and she sees you. Oh, Ula, come in, come in, Ula. Who who are your friends? So many. So you don't. You usually don't have this many friends. How? Huh? I, I don't. I am a, a bit of a lone wolf these days, but um, I'm not so great with names. Can we do a little introduction here? No, thanks. We've got stuff to sell. Never mind. I think she was asking your names, guys. Yes, I do see them on um, this uh, magical device. That it's <laughs> That's true. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, so we got uh, Lucky. Here, who is a lovely songwriter, musician, <laughs> from what I can tell. Uh, Nikoya, um, um, Maya, Valmaya, Valmaya, yes, the full version. Um, Kel Kelwin, and uh, Winter over here. Oh well, it's very nice to meet friend. you all. How how can I help you today? Like um, I said, we have we have stuff to sell. All right, well, let's see the stuff you would like to sell. All right, we got two sets of studded leather, uh, three short swords, two daggers, like everything that we just weren't uh, using. Don't we, don't we have some stuff to appraise? I'm not, I'm not interested in non-magical items. There are, there's a smith around the corner. Um, he might buy that stuff off of you, but if you have items that are you need perhaps oh, we identified did. or yeah we are we into did. looking to sell some items uh Didn't we've we gotten that the weapons items? were all enchanted not all of them uh, you came across a mixture some of, of them were, yeah you came across okay. a mixture of enchanted weapons and on not an on yeah, non enchanted weapons how much does it cost to have something identified um it costs 1 gold Per item, oh. um, that fee is waived though if you decide to sell me that item. Probably not happening. Um, we've got this skull medallion with an exposed brain and two that eyes. I really want. That looks pretty cool. I think I might like that. Uh, <laughs> Just look super like spooky. Skull. Uh, Ula, you don't get to come on board and you know call dibs on stuff and then. <laughs> Just so, saying, it looks cool. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, and then this bronze scepter. All right, hold on a second. While I get my identifying book. <laughs> I guess I guess we can just identify all the like nice looking items. Yeah. So like the my glaive. There's a shield. Oh, there's that eyeball shield. There's a dagger. There's a short sword. There's a lot of junk. A lot of junk. Okay. Well, you hand uh, the skull, and I hope you're keeping track of this. Um, the skull is the oh this 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 is a medallion of thoughts. T h o t. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you can you can use this uh, to. Um, this has three charges, and you can cast the detect thoughts spell three times a day. It recharges daily at dawn. Explain the spell. Detect thoughts. Um, That's it. Yeah, just you can tell what someone's <laughs> thinking. <laughs> Oh, is that the one you can detect surface thoughts? Yeah. Um, but then if, and they don't know. So yeah, you can detect surface thoughts, but then, uh, and they don't know you're doing it. But if you want to delve deeper to what they're really thinking, uh, they do can make a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. yep. And the, the rod. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, that was... Uh, oh, yes. This is the Rod of the Pact Keeper. Uh, you gain a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls to saving throw DCs of your Warlock spell. This is an item for Warlocks. We don't oh. have any of those <laughs> here. <laughs> we don't have any of those here. Why would we have warlocks and their weird agreements and soul selling? Nothing. Uh, well, these are wizards. Looks... <laughs> and she looks well. She kind of looks knowingly at you and slides it back to you and says, "You might meet some along the way." Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> Um, what else did you have? Uh, we had the nice looking uh, shield, dagger, short sword, glaive, oh, and spear. And a spear. And yeah. the second she... shield that had the eye on it. Yeah. And she, she picks up the shield that has the eye <laughs> and says, oh, oh my, this is, Wow. I haven't seen one of these in a while. Uh, this is a sentinel shield. Um, whoever whoever has this uh, is a. It's just they have a little bit more insight. Um, technically, uh, basically, it gives you advantage on initiative rolls, Ooh. initiative rolls, and it gives you uh, advantage on wisdom saving rolls. Ooh, nice. No, um, and then she takes the spear. Oh, this is this is very nice. This is a uh, this is just this is as an enchantment on it. Uh, helps you um, increases the amount of damage you can do and and the greater chance of hitting your opponent. So basically, a plus one to attack and damage. Uh, what else did you have? Um, oh, a, a shield. Yep, another shield. Uh, this is this is just an enchanted shield with a um, a plus one. Another short, enchanted short sword and dagger. Uh, that is a plus one to hit. And my glaive. I was assuming okay. all of those nice looking things are just like. Yeah, yeah, your glaive is one to hit. Um, and you guys also had a dagger. Yep. That had a plus two damage. Plus two? Plus two. Uh, and you had a scroll. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is a scroll of knocking. Uh, what now? There's a scroll of knocking. Basically, it unlocks uh, things. Yeah. Um, if you choose a target that is held shut with an arcane lock, uh, that spell is suppressed for 10 minutes. It's so. better than most rogues can do. So, important. So, so yes. Um, 
Would you like to sell any of these items to me? I'd be happy to take them off your hands. They're quite... Uh, we need a minute. Okay, that's fine. Take all the time you want. Group huddle. Anyone want this plus two dagger? Anyone going to be using it? I think it? in that short sword. Sure. Have at it. That one you can have. I appreciate that. Make sure you write all these down in your inventory. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to equip yeah. them for those of you using D and D Beyond. Mm -hmm. So now that I know that that medallion won't kill me, I definitely want that. Okay, then Nikoya would be getting the rod. Yep. Okay. Okay. What did the rod do again? It was um. Uh, the rod gave you um. What was the rod? It was the rod of the Pactor. Pact keeper. Pact keeper. Yeah. Pact keeper. Um, no, can you already? What? What? Do you already have the text thoughts? No. You do. Oh, I do. Yeah. Would you rather have that one? Nah, I'd rather have okay. this rod. Okay. Um, whoever has the rod of the pack <laughs> number, um, is a, and you must be holding it for it to work, uh, is a plus one to spell attack rolls and plus one to the saving throw DCs. Okay. So if you, yeah, so basically, your so basically your saving throw, your attack bonus and spell saving throw increases by one. Which is really good. That is good, yeah. Um, okay, so the short sword went to Ula. Um, I know Lucky, you'd wanted this freaky eyeball shield. <laughs> yeah. You still want the freaky <laughs> eyeball shield? Yeah. All right, knock yourself out. Uh, Winter, did you want the yeah, there's so... the plus two dagger? There's the, yeah, I'd, I'd oh sorry, go ahead. And there's the other nice looking shield. Yeah, so I already took the heavy splint armor. We found that right. Yeah. That's like, um, I would definitely take the dagger. Yeah, go for it. Did you want the shield or no? Um, how did with. Two-handed weapons, does that have any impact, or how does that work? You can't have two-handed weapons if you so, can't... Right, so it would be, like, at the sacrifice of one Can you weapon. use a shield to bash as a weapon? No, it's not no. a light. You need a light weapon. Yeah, you can't be a two-weapon fighter with okay. a shield, sadly. Right. Um, I don't know. Kellen, do you want it? The shield? I'll keep it for now, actually. It probably wouldn't okay. hurt to have... Yeah, keep it in the inventory. Yeah. And then for the dagger, does that have any kind of a name? Oh, dagger plus two. Plus two or plus one? Sorry. It's plus two to damage. It's a really Not nice dagger. Any to attack, just damage? Just damage. Okay. Awesome. Okay, yeah, so I'll take that. All right. And then, so that leaves us with probably selling... Just like the junk, so like the two daggers, the three short swords, and the two leftover sets of studded leather. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're gonna hold on to all the magic items. Yeah. Did okay. somebody take the little gray bag thing? The bag of uh, tricks believe, is still. I believe Lucky took the bag okay. of tricks, uh, but. Oh yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Yep. Now, he just took it, if one of you guys wants it. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. also two potions of healing. Didn't Who used... Yep. <laughs> Does I someone want one. the bag of tricks? You can, I think you can hold on to it. You can, yeah, keep, it. You can keep that. Yeah. All right, Nikoya, here's a potion. Thanks. And then, did anyone else use one on our way here? I think I used just my hit die. Okay. I did the... No, I did second wind. Never mind. All right, let's Woo! see. Um, Lucky, why don't you take this? Actually, Ula, yeah. do you have a potion of healing? I do not. Why don't you take I this? Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, what type of potion is this exactly? Just Greater a, healing or just no? a just regular? potion of healing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Lucky, why don't you take this Nox scroll? Because I think. You're the only one who can read it. I don't really know. Okay. Maybe Valmaya and Nikoya could. I'm not sure, but I don't want it. 
I mean, the group should have it. I don't want to be responsible for it. So yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll just be selling the three short swords, two daggers, and two sets of studded leather because we took two of them. Okay. So you won't be well. You won't be selling any of those here, my love. That's fine. I. Yes, but it was wonderful to see you again, Ula, and I'm glad I could help you out with your uh, with your friends out and good to see you. Um, before you leave, though, that will be one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine gold, please. All right, each of you tossing the gold, I'll cover the rest. Sure. There you are. All right, remove that from your inventory, please. Um, are there different kinds of bags of tricks? Yes, Aren't you have like the gray one. Kinds? Oh, okay. You have the gray one, and you can look that up online to see what, or look that up in the books to see what you can pull out of it. Okay. Hey, let's go to a store and sell those other things. Oh, and we had gems to sell, too. Oh, yeah, we did. You do? Oh, yeah. All oh, right. Oh. We does, each have a... Oh, does set, this lady right? want those gems? Oh, you have gems. Yeah, I forgot. Let me see if they uh, are can be used as components. Um, so she takes the gems from you. Uh, and she kind of looks up a little at the at Velmaya and Nikoi and goes, Huh, oh, I'm surprised wizards aren't jumping all over spell components. But you must already have your own. They've got a so, focus. Um... So she goes through and looks, and oh yes, all of these, all of these are wonderful. Uh, that was what, ten gems? Yep, yeah. ten gems. Uh, yes. So uh, oh, she, she, uh, you give her the nine gold for the uh, enchanting the or identifying the items, and uh, she gives you five hundred gold back. Hmm. All right. What about all those little tiny gems from the kobolds? Does she want those? Oh, I forgot about those. You were paid in gems or gold? In gems. They were worth... Uh, I think they were worth 100 each. Yeah. Pretty sure. No, uh, they weren't. No, 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 no. no. It, it was 140 was... each. Yeah, it was... It was... Yeah. It yeah. was like... Yeah, because it was like eight kobolds and you were splitting it six ways or whatever yeah mm -hmm. yeah so okay uh if you want to do that here you can do that here yeah i'd like to yeah, yeah. okay so, so let's just say you guys cash in all the and she she just kind of laughs and says, Oof, you guys have cleaned me out i hope someone comes in and buys something soon <laughs> what is 500 divided by sh you know what never Ula, you weren't there we're just gonna each get another hundred <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Fair. Does does she have anything good to buy? Uh you can look around if you want. Um I should have planned for this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> players might buy something preposterous. <laughs> uh, but but uh, if you want to give me two seconds, uh, I can do a little rolling. And if you guys, uh, you know what? If you guys want to look around, or you know what? If you guys are looking for anything in particular, let me know. We're not. Okay. We're just, <laughs> all right. You know what? We can just do we can just do a little bit of browsing here. That's fine. Let me find my browsing tables. <laughs> What kind of Gosh, browser? A table for everything, isn't there? Uh... I'm gonna go get more wine from the store across the street. <laughs> Same. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's take a quick break. Okay. Okay, okay well, I do. <laughs> you guys want to apparently go shopping, so we'll take a quick break and we'll meet back here in ten minutes. Sounds good. Well, I'm remember, glad you're here. Remember all that stuff you had planned. Well, good to see you. All that stuff surprise. you have planned, it's just yeah. shopping. We're just shopping. Uh, the the only else. thing I really had planned was Ula. I didn't really know how that was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you think we were all going to yeah. just attack her? 